This video is brought to you by Incogni. Red Bull is best known as an energy drink, but it actually does well, basically everything. The company developed a unique guerrilla marketing style throughout the 1990s, which it still uses to this day, sponsoring parties, extreme sports, and high-octane events, which can be turned into content and monetized. This strategy has been immensely successful, with Red Bull's revenue climbing year on year, and there's no sign that it will slow down anytime soon. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the history of the Red Bull brand, its clever marketing strategy, and why the company is doing so well. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> So let's go back to where it all began. The company Red Bull GmbH was co-founded in 1984 by Thai businessman Charlie Al Uvidia and Austrian businessman Dietrich Marteschitz. After Marteschitz had discovered Charlie's Krateng Deng drink a couple of years earlier on a business trip and found that it cured his jet lag. The two businessmen then adapted Charlie Al's formula to suit Western taste buds, making it fizzy and reducing sweetness to create the new Red Bull product. Each of them then invested $500,000 of their savings and took a 49% stake in the business, giving the remaining 2% to Charlie Al's son, and agreeing that Marta Schitz would run the company. Red Bull was first introduced to the Austrian energy drink market in 1987, but it was initially considered dangerous by the Austrian Food Authority and was banned for a period of time in Hungary, France, and Denmark because of its high caffeine and taurine content. Nevertheless, the drink was hugely popular with young professionals and started to take off in the early 90s. It was then introduced to Germany and the UK in 1994, and the US in 1997, where it went on to capture 75% of the entire energy drinks market. That same year, Red Bull also started using its iconic slogan, Red Bull Gives You Wings. Since then, the energy drinks brand has expanded to over 175 countries in total, and now employs 6,000 sales staff. They sold 12 billion cans annually in 2023, a figure that's steadily growing year on year. Net revenues also rose by an impressive 9% to 10.5 billion euros in 2023, driven by drink sales. Now, Red Bull has directed a fair chunk of these revenues to its sports investments, with sponsorship payments to sports people exceeding 1 billion euros for the first time in 2022. Now, Red Bull has a strong profit margin on its products, and through an outsourcing strategy with their strategic partner Coca-Cola, uses vertical integration to keep costs low along its supply chain. So let's take a look at how Red Bull's business model really works, starting with its pioneering marketing strategy. Although it started as an energy drinks brand, Red Bull has now basically transitioned into a marketing company and content creator. When it launched as an energy drink, the company didn't have a huge budget for traditional marketing, so Marta Jits wanted to find a more creative niche than standard TV ads. So Red Bull went down the guerrilla marketing approach, initially targeting men aged 18 to 35 at college parties and bars, offering free cans in exchange for helping to spread the word. In fact, if you went to university, you might have spotted the infamous Red Bull branded Mini Cooper somewhere around campus. This in-your-face and word-of-mouth approach massively paid off, and Red Bull's drive to get its products into trendy shops, clubs, and bars helped make the brand go viral. Now, a sizable percentage of the company's revenue each year, rumored to be between 25 and 30%, is reinvested into marketing campaigns, ensuring that Red Bull keeps up awareness among consumers in order to boost sales. Red Bull's marketing campaigns rely on the adrenaline and excitement of high energy activities and challenges, and they've become significantly bolder over time too. Probably its most memorable stunt was when Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner completed the highest ever freefall from 128,000 feet in 2012, kitted out in a Red Bull spacesuit. Red Bull also run its own wacky events like the Flugtag competition, where people build objects they hope will defy gravity and launch themselves off the end of a platform. 
They've also got their soapbox race, where people race down an obstacle course in often rickety homemade wagons. Crucially though, there's a strong content creation element behind these campaigns too. Hosting and filming these events to put them on social media makes them accessible everywhere. So extra revenue can be generated through long videos on streaming platforms like YouTube. In fact, Red Bull has grown its own following on social media to 14 million YouTube subscribers, slightly more than TODR, and 19.5 million followers on Instagram. It's also focused on creating specific content for its audience, like human interest documentaries and feature films on people doing cool activities like free running and cave diving. Which brings us on to another massive element of Red Bull's business strategy, which is sponsorship. Red Bull sponsors hundreds of extreme sports, athletes, and events of all scales, from local to global, including mountain biking, surfing, snowboarding, skateboarding, cliff jumping, ice skating, and perhaps most famously, motorsports. They own two Formula One teams, Red Bull Racing, which it acquired in 2004, and then Alpha Terry, formerly Toro Rosso, in 2006. However, they were already involved in Formula 1 before this, having sponsored the Swiss team Sauber from 1995 to 2004. Plus, selling branded merch and VIP passes for F1 events also helps the brand pull in additional revenue. Plus, the company owns the racetrack used by the Styrian Grand Prix in Austria, which hosts a series of events throughout the year. On top of motorsport, Red Bull also sponsors a number of major football teams in Europe, the USA, and Brazil, which carry its name or initials. The company bought the Austrian football team RB Salzburg and its reserve team FC Liefering in 2005, controversially changing the team's traditional colours of purple and white to its brand colours of red and white. It then bought the New York Red Bulls in 2006, followed by Germany's RB Leipzig in 2009. Now, the club's name is shortened to RB because the German Bundesliga doesn't allow blatant sponsorship. So to get around it, the club's badge is almost identical to the Red Bull logo, and the stadium is named the Red Bull Arena. Though finally, though far less well known, is Red Bull's music and events business. Now, the company owns an alternative rock record label, Red Bull Records in Los Angeles, which provides artist development and marketing to a number of bands. Red Bull also sponsors several music festivals and projects globally. So why is Red Bull doing so well? Well, its decision to eschew traditional marketing and instead invest more in fun, consumer-focused, experience-based activities and content was very forward-thinking. Now, more and more brands are having to become content creators like Red Bull, producing and sharing videos about their activities online. But Red Bull was way ahead of the curve on this, having nailed their marketing strategy way back in the late 90s. Red Bull was also quick to find its audience, recognizing its product as perfect for a high-energy crowd that loved to party, go out, play sports, and explore the world. Since then, their customers have become the center of the brand's content marketing model, because the brand realized that these moments and experiences, not just products, could be shared around the world to help increase its reach. While you've been tipping your Red Bull and diving off cliffs, you might not realise that shady forces are working in the background to collect personal data from various sites and bundle it all together ready to sell on to a third party. Now, these data brokers can sell this bundle of information about you to anyone from a company to an online criminal. Now, while you might assume that you're safe online, perhaps you change your password regularly, or perhaps you're a hawk and always uncheck that little box that signs you up to annoying newsletters. Unfortunately, this doesn't completely save you. Companies that hold your data can still fall victim to a data breach, meaning that these data brokers can still compile information about you to sell on to others. Now, this is where our sponsor Incogni comes in. They reach out to these data brokers on your behalf, request that your data is removed, and deal with any problems that might arrive. In fact, they're tenacious, and will put in multiple data removal requests even after your data's been removed to make sure that it doesn't go back on the market. So, create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. 
Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks for Incogni for sponsoring this video.